Bonjour Zoé, I wanted to begin with part two of the Futur Intérieur by beginning at your summary section again. So you said that the difference between part, partie 2 and partie 1 of the Futur Intérieur was the following. The second part of the Futur Intérieur is different than the first because it has to do with motion verbs, aller, partir, etc. I agree. Um, in French 1, I said motion verbs. In French 3, I'm going to give you a more nuanced um, definition of what these verbs are by switching to a PowerPoint. But before I do that, I want to show you um, this, this pie chart here, which interestingly enough, um, in French, they don't call it a pie chart, they call it a camembert, it's a type of cheese. So it's really a cheese chart um, in French, but that's beside the point. Anyway, so les verbes auxiliaires en français. So you see um, in this camembert chart that um, the two auxiliary verbs in French are avoir and être. And the lion's share of verbs that use the auxiliary verb avoir or être go actually to avoir. Only a small percentage go to être. I made up the 90 and 10 percent just to give you a good visual. So if we uh, zoom in on this, there is a list of verbs that you are familiar with, which you called motion verbs, and they are devenir, revenir, monter, rester, sortir, venir, arriver, naître, descendre, rentrer, retourner, aller, uh, tomber, which is not there, but is one also, mourir and partir. These are what's called Dr. And Mrs. Vandertram verbs or motion verbs. I think a more accurate way to describe these, and I said this in class, is that these are change of state verbs. Most of them do imply motion, but it's more accurate to say that they are change of state verbs. So if we look at devenir, which means to become, that's a change of state. You are one thing changing to another thing. Revenir is a change of state. You are at one point and then going to a different point. Monte, which means to get on, means going from one state, one place to another place. Um, I think an interesting one is naître. Naître means to be born. You are really changing states from being in the womb to outside the womb. So these are change of state verbs and these verbs use être as their auxiliary verb. So let's jump back to your exercises here that you wrote. So for the first one, devenir professeur de français comes first before prendre des élèves avec moi en France. You wrote, je serai devenu professeur de français quand je serai prendu des élèves avec moi en France. Devenir in the future tense is uh, or rather in its past participle form is a bit tricky. So let me show you that. Note that devenir, revenir, venir, naître, and mourir all have irregular past participles. So devenir becomes devenu. You wrote, je serai devenu, and that actually makes a lot of sense because typically, Zoe, I, our verbs change to I. That makes sense. But devenir is one of those weird ones where it's not devenir or deveni, it's devenu. And because you're uh, a girl, Zoe, you're going to add an E onto this. So it's devenu with an E. And down here you wrote, je serai prendu. What you want to do is simply say, put this in the future tense. So it will be, je, oh, you can't see that, je prendrai. Infinitive plus avoir. So down here, partir. Partir is not one of the weird ones, so you're right. I R to I, nicely done. Je serai parti en Italie. You're a girl, so what needs to happen to parti? Add E, nice. En Italie, quand je serai artiste, nice. And what needs to happen to aller, because you're a girl? Add me. Nicely done. I want to transition to the répétition guidée uh, that you wrote here. So you said, uh, so Marie says, je veux être artiste à Paris. And you said, tu seras allé étudier en Paris quand tu seras artiste. Typically with cities, instead of saying on, they say ah. Just a minor thing there. Marie is a girl, so you need to add because you're talking about her. You're saying you, Marie, 
will have gone to study in Paris. Vincent does not need an E, so you neglected that here, which is good. So tu seras allé et tu dis en Chine quand tu seras acteur. If we look at um, 7 and 8, you have these circles, which I think you had questions about, so let's just go through them. Nous voulons être des chanteuses mondiales. So, chanteuses mondiales. I know that whoever's talking, Teresa and Samantha, are girls because it's chanteuse. So instead of il, you would want to say vous because you're talking, responding back to them, right? Teresa and Samantha are talking to you, Zoe. Hey, Zoe, I want, we want to be uh, world famous singers. And you, you should say, oh, well, you guys. So, change this to vous. You put a tu die. A tu die is not a change of state um, verb. So this one would be vous aurez a tu die. And then I think maybe like around the world, you could say partout au monde quand vous serez chanteuse. You didn't use a change of state verb here, but that's okay. It's, it's no big deal. And then Mark and Thomas say, Nous voulons être des traducteurs. Actually, just very quickly, this should be ore. I don't know why I didn't do that. But anyway, they, Mark and Thomas tell you, Zoe, Hey, Zoe, nous voulons être des traducteurs. And then you wrote, Il serait traducteur. I'm, I'm seeing some of this with your classmates. It's this A-I-E-N-T thing going on. This is actually a phrase in French. Il serait traducteur. This means they would be translators, which makes sense. But what you want to say is what will they have done when they will be translators. So maybe you can say, vous serez allé en France quand vous serez so, well done, Zoe, overall. Um, I would do some of the guided practices that are located on Haiku for more practice, and let me know if you have any questions. Merci, Zoe.